Hello YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors! On this episode of Toys Are The Way, we will be taking a look at my most recent custom Star Wars figures. If you're new to the channel or a fan of Star Wars collecting, be sure to smash a like on this video, remember to subscribe, and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified. Welcome back everyone! So you may have noticed there are quite a few aliens set up here and naturally they could not resist a drink, which of course led to a fight at the old cantina. We have plenty of customs here made from a variety of recent vintage collection figures such as Mithral, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Grief Karga, and more. I'm a strong believer that there is no such thing as a peg warmer, and as the great Master Yoda said, it's only a peg warmer in your mind. A little paint and creativity can make a whole galaxy if you let it do so. So with that being said, let's take a closer look at each one of these figures. The galaxy is full of starships and therefore you're going to need some trusty mechanics to service them. This Sniven is head of maintenance in the industrial sector known as Polonium Port, made from a Joy Toy 118th scale figure with excellent articulation, a 3D printed head, and some custom painting, he's ready to tackle any service calls that come his way. Whether you're looking for a tune-up, a new hyperdrive, or some droid maintenance for your astromech, this Snaggletooth's got you covered. Vehicle maintenance is no easy task and typically requires more than one tech, unless you're as talented as Quill from The Mandalorian. This Duro is another member of the Polonium Port maintenance team and has even worked hangar bays in Moss Eisley and the assembly lines on Corellia. Another simple custom composed of a 3D printed head provided by Scoundrel Stock, Joy Toy action figure, and some Oasis blue spray paint and acrylic matched to perfection. This Duro is now ready to get to work. Here we have one of the many scum and villainy that roam the streets of my diorama. This Deveronian was once an enforcer for the crime syndicates, but now is loyal to no one. The majority of the figure is a discounted Grief Karga with some custom paintwork and accessories provided by Marauder's Gun Runners. Additionally, I removed the lower tunic made of soft plastic to change the overall look and added the plastic trench coat from a separate Hondo Anaka figure, and of course added paint. This new face can be seen lurking the landing platforms of my spaceport diorama and should certainly not be trusted. The Quarren are notorious for their aggression and this mercenary will gun you down in a heartbeat. Similar to the previous figure, I've added custom paintwork and accessories, but opted to slice the middle part of the lower tunic, allowing for greater range of motion. This allows the figure to achieve a wider action stance when he is gunning down his opponents and settling scores. And if you run into this squid head, you're likely going to see his partner in crime. This figure is composed of a spare Hondo Anaka, Cassian Andor vest, custom head sculpt, and some paintwork. I really enjoyed painting these 3D printed heads from Scoundrel Stock, and I think that they turned out excellent. I simply primed them with coral spray paint by Rust-Oleum, and then added a series of orange and brown washes, along with some dry brushing, to achieve the final look. Definitely a fine addition to my alien lineup. If you haven't noticed, Snaggletooth, Zutton, Tequil, Zutmore, or whatever you'd like to call him, is my favorite cantina alien and alien species in general. There's just something about Snivians that really says Star Wars, so naturally I want to add as many of these characters to my collection as possible. Once again, we have a simple repaint of a Mithral figure, Marauder's accessories, and the addition of some Grief Karga holsters, bringing this new Snivian to our docking bays, streets, and cantinas. Next up, we have this wandering Snivian whose name might also be Ben for all we know. I have really enjoyed the amount of different customs that can be made from the Kenobi figures. Townspeople are a very challenging character to add to our collections, and this figure really opens the door to that possibility. By applying several brown washes, dry brushings, and some custom soft goods, this Snivian can be added to any market diorama. Additionally, the incredible articulation from this base figure means this alien will have no problems defending himself. Did someone say Blue Snaggletooth? While that Kenner figure looked like an alien you could trust not to gun you down at the cantina, the same can't be said about this blonde renegade. This mercenary comes fully loaded with plenty of articulation thanks to the base figure by Acid Rain, enough that the Snivian is able to achieve an impressive sniper position with little to no effort. As you can see, I've opted for a unique blonde hairstyle, added custom soft goods, a bandolier, and side bag, giving this alien a classic but fresh look. Moving on, we have a Clatoonian guild hunter from the Mid-Rim. Clatoonians are another familiar alien from the Star Wars universe, and this dog base is ready to collect on any bounty he may encounter. An important skill when making custom figures is recycling all accessories and figure assets to the best of your ability. Here we have one of many leftover Grief Cargo cloaks, altered, painted, and paired with a discounted Cassian Andor, providing us with a whole new figure. Clatoonians are well known to be enforcers in Jabba the Hutt's palace or aboard his desert skiffs. 
but Tatooine is a garden of many bounties and employment opportunities. This handsome dog face has a reputation for aggressive negotiations, tuning his blaster, and slicing his opponents. Assembled from the excellent Obi-Wan Kenobi figure, a soft goods scarf, accessories, and removable hat by Marauders, this foul-tempered lowlife is now ready to handle business on the Dune Sea and beyond. While the galaxy has plenty of hired guns, security, and bounty hunters, there's always a need for smugglers and pilots. This Duro is ready to deliver any shipment his employer needs transported off-world. Fashioned together from leftover Hondo Anaka arms and a spare Panda Baba figure, this classic Star Wars alien is ready to charge any Imperial blockade or checkpoint. Equally as talented as Cad Bane, you can rest assured that this Duro pilot's got you covered. But perhaps you're simply looking for safe passage off-world. Well then, this excellent freighter pilot with a solid reputation is the mithral you've been looking for. A simple alien trying to make his way through the galaxy, you can find him at one of the local cantinas enjoying a beverage or passing time at Docking Bay 204. The figure is a simple mithral head swap on a painted grief cargo body, pod racing goggles, and a Force Awakens vest. Next up, we have our final Duro of the bunch, who is a creative take on the character seen in the recent Star Wars Eclipse video game trailer. This awesome head sculpt was an absolute must for me when I stumbled upon it on Scoundrel Stock. The eye patch and hood are sculpted very well and work seamlessly with the Obi-Wan Kenobi figure. Once again, a simple repaint along with the addition of a bandolier and some rounds to the belt now make this elusive hunter ready to deliver a precision shot and collect on his bounty. Finishing off this group of customs, we have some Aqualish Enforcers. Walrus Man is one of the most recognizable aliens from the Cantina scene, alongside Hammerhead and Greedo, so naturally this is a character that I want to sprinkle throughout my displays and dioramas. Additionally, their multiple appearances in The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett have left me needing more super articulated versions of these aliens, and fortunately, discounted Grief Cargo repaints allow me to fill those gaps. Both of these head sculpts have been primed with a Rust-Oleum base coat of gray or fossil spray paint, and then addressed with a light wash of black or cinnamon watered down acrylic, which is then followed by some dry brushing. And lastly, the eyes, hair color, and mouth are carefully painted with acrylic paints. This Aqualish is a repainted Cassian Andor figure, sporting an incredible World War II tactical belt and BAR ammo pouches that I personally think look fantastic when paired with the DLT rifle. Hopefully this band of pirates, mercenaries, and troublemakers can learn to control themselves, but then again, Star Wars is known for its scum and villainy. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a closer look at all my recent custom Star Wars figures. Feel free to leave any questions or thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps promote all the world building content and is greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.